Kushang, hi, it's good to have you with us today. Hi, Ashu. Long time. Yeah, it's super to connect again. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. I hope everybody at work, at home, within the team is safe. Yes, absolutely. Things have been bad, but now things are back to normal. So hopefully we will stay that way. Wonderful. All okay at your end? Everything okay, Kushang. Everything okay. You know, fingers crossed. Uh, you know, things have been all right, and uh, trying to stay as indoors as we can. Uh, so yeah, I think that's that's the new normal, right? Uh, that we're living with. Uh, Kushang, wish before we dive into this topic, right? I'm I was particularly looking forward for this conversation, right? Uh, I think uh, you know I have had the opportunity of personally knowing you, uh, you know, from uh, your college days, right? Which is 2013. Uh, you know, having that very long discussion that we had uh, at 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 uh, the hostel. at uh, iid kanpur one night while i was there yeah um and you're still a student right uh, you know but before we dive into the discussion today you know uh, why don't you take us to your journey you know there is uh, some fantastic work that you've done uh, you know uh, ad count technologies uh, with uh, ad your cup and now supply node has, has had uh, some evolution right uh, you evolved as a company why don't you take us to that sure ashu i think i cannot forget that night that uh, literally changed me right so <laughs> <laughs> so i was looking for a you know uh uh a uh, 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 end to pick and uh, then follow that right and that was that night i would say so i'll give right. the credit to you right wherever we have start uh, started it was kind of an inspiring session uh, organized by esel back in uh, the days in 2014 one of my final years third year i think and right. uh, uh, we met and we talked about what we are looking to do and that's how you know we kind of uh, Jumped on to add your cup. I still uh, remember all those conversation early in the days, uh, <laughs> just before I think you were about to enter business world. I think at that particular time, and uh, we started building add your cup. So we were looking to advertise initially, you know, on on the paper cups. That's how it all started. You know, the crazy conversation and the tech we were trying to build that anybody could actually imagine how it will look like on a uh, right. cup, right? Uh, no cap. As, as as early as two thousand fourteen. as early as 2014 right and absolutely literally no capital i still remember I, how i got my first few bucks to actually travel to delhi so it was by making one of my fellow entrepreneurs promotional video which right. was uh, gorovs i still remember uh, and we made that video we got about 20000 bucks from them and uh, they were generous enough to give that amount <laughs> and we <laughs> used that money as one of our travel boots you know to travel right. to shuttle between kanpur and delhi and all those meetings we had uh, early in the days which finally led to the business world accelerate uh, where uh, you know we were picked in uh, one of the first batch uh, which led to the first check from dineout founders and one of my first customers teapot was a part of that batch so right. all that began there right there uh, we jumped into the restro space i still remember my first meeting with you robin and me meeting at robin's cafe and uh, understanding the problems they are facing in procurement of packaging material right uh, that was a very insightful meeting uh, which right. led me uh, into a direction that uh, restaurants are actually facing a huge problem when it comes to bottom line and right. the procurement is a huge huge challenge it, and sure. uh, that was an eye opener right and uh, uh, the advertising business which we were bringing was looking like an option which can actually bring the cost down for a restaurant right? right so that's how it all started back in 2015 in july uh, mm-hmm. we got our first check uh, as i said during the business world accelerate days uh, from right. the founders of dine out which was a very strategic investment because that gave us a entry into uh, a lot of restaurants which dine out already had access to right so with that knowledge uh, we continued our hustle uh, we scaled our business we did a major pivot uh, later in the year Uh, in 2015, and we dropped the advertising idea uh, because we were not facing, we were not getting continuous flow of advertising opportunities, right? Mm-hmm. And we realized that just by aggregating, uh, you know, we can actually give the uh, benefit of margins to our customers, which were restaurants. Right. So right. in no time, we kind of scaled to about 200 restaurants. We were supplying packaging material to them, and we dropped the advertising bit and started scaling up that business. And in the next four to five years. uh we added six to seven more categories to our uh, uh marketplace and uh, we were now we were now uh, dealing with uh, you know more than 2000 restaurants by the end of 2019 uh with doing a revenue of almost a million dollars uh, across the seven categories right and we were live in almost 15 to 16 cities where we were shipping these material so that's how the adder cup journey scaled up 
uh, and with this we got a lot of learning and insights into how restaurants actually were procuring right and it was not only packaging right. it was uh, the food categories it was the perishable food categories uh, even the housekeeping material and everything so overall right. we understood that you know uh, there is huge value if we look at the process more closely how exactly it's happening and it was an eye opener uh, i mean like it was all disrupted uh, sure. it it was completely offline there are four right. to five different uh, you know stakeholders who mm-hmm. were trying to influence the purchase decision it all started right. from the outlets but then purchase manager the chefs right. Right. Uh, the operations guy all had a say and the owner had hardly any clue what's happening at the back end because he was too busy right. facing the front end so right. there was a huge data leakage revenue leakage happening at the back end and we thought of you know uh, you know killing it all by di- uh, creating a digital layer right so Fantastic. we came up with supply uh, in september 2019 and since then sure. it has been a great uh, addition for the industry awesome so i think i think through the course of our conversation i'm going to cover specifically on in terms of how how supply node is working you know what are some of the things that you are sort of uh, doing uh, you know some of the intricacies of of the product layer and and you know how it's sort of played out uh, at the consumer's end right but i think before that we'll take a step back and you know i want you to sort of uh, how's 2020 been right i think uh, you know all of us know that you know for the food industry dining out industry uh, dining out industry specifically right i think it's been a it's been a year of disruption right yeah. um and i think i think that said uh, the industry has also evolved in a certain sense right where uh, i think they have been able to sort of identify certain inefficiencies and and have been able to sort of shed that extra uh, kilos right uh, but you know uh, you know you've been more closer to the ground right you've really seen how this is this entire you know pandemic has played out right uh, before we go into the future right how's 2020 been and 2021 been uh, for uh, for this industry and you know what are what are what are some of the macro trends which are here to stay yeah so uh, ashu i think uh, food and beverage industry uh, was one of the biggest loser uh, when the first wave hit our country right uh, and i would say that led to you know a very interesting uh, shift you know in the industry okay. uh, so you know the loss was as high as 20% of the market right okay. so uh, our industry uh, the horeca industry hotel restaurant catering industry right. is roughly about 60 billion dollars uh, okay. the indian market scenario right. and uh, almost 9 to 10 billion dollars got wiped off okay that's that's as per the report of uh, nrai uh, mm-hmm. they reported that in uh, in an article in et uh, and uh, we saw a huge change in segment you know right. earlier fine dines and casual dining restaurants were covering roughly about 20 25% of the market share right kitchens qsrs were still early birds never reached the potential yet were doing somewhere around 7 to 8% of the market right, right. after pandemic there has been a huge shift you know right. a lot of restauranters in the casual dining fine dining bar uh, you know these categories have moved on to open their own cloud kitchens have uh, opened up their facilities in kitchen, kitchen infra- infrastructure companies uh, mm-hmm. they have also opened up uh, deliveries big time right. and are giving takeaway and qsr format is uh, you know uh, growing like never right, right. Uh, so that particular uh, shift has happened so even in the remaining pie of 50 billion dollars there is a huge contribution now uh in this particular category right and almost everybody is delivering right there is not a single restaurant which is out there in the market uh even today uh, who is not delivering now right? right otherwise their survival is not possible at all right so that has led to uh an other factors like okay. uh, you know the support system of this this ecosystem the delivery ecosystem has grown you right. can see zomato filing for an ipo right, right. Uh, swiggy uh doing valuations which it never achieved right mm-hmm. uh, so this support ecosystem has become important more than ever right. you see dot pay coming up in two year two years they reached to you know more than 400 million in yeah. yes 400 million in uh, valuation google pitching it right so uh, digitizing the ordering system lesser right. dependency on uh, third party aggregators that's again a new t- trend which just evolved in 2020 right, right. and then the back end right so the whole back end now needs to be super lean and everything needs to be transparent because now the margins are very very low right? right because the sale is not there you have to give commissions to the third party so there is a ultra focus on cost right 
and that needs a digital layer so people are adapting digital solutions uh, like never before right? right so this is this is one of the key traits which a restauranter has now take uh, started to take it seriously earlier right. you know they were making so much margin especially due to the formats they were doing the pubs the alcohol the crazy margins right, right. Uh, but since they cannot do it anymore they have to focus on these key factors right, right. so yeah so those are my key takeaways from 2020 so a lot mm-hmm. of things have happened in the right way uh, but yes uh, the market has been hit very badly especially the lockdown period almost 6 months everything was locked no, everybody was clueless they didn't know what to do right, right. yeah that's what happened in 2020 i would say interesting and and uh, you know my next question is essentially a subset of the first question that i asked you right uh, and that is uh, you know that you know we're not going to be in this state perpetually right i think uh, you know the markets opened up post august september and you know and then we could see the immediate surge in numbers right and i think everybody was talking about the volumes coming back to the 2019 levels right uh, and i think so was food i think people went out and people were eating out i think and then restaurants were packed uh while of course the damage that had happened had happened already but i think there was a substantial comeback that the industry sort of had right um we will not perpetually be in this in this current stage right where people are locked up and can't go out and can't eat or even ordering for that matter is not say for example as consistent or as high because you're constantly concerned that you know there could be a possibility of covid contraction or whatever right um right uh so what are, what are some of the strengths that you that you see shaping up right i mean what do you see the current or uh, you know how do you how do you see the india food scene uh shaping up in uh, in in the next few years i mean uh, are we moving into uh, you know given that there are so much of content consumption now and you know and everybody was essentially indoors there were a lot of people trying a lot of new cuisines do you see a surge in you know a new cuisine or experimentation uh in the food business happening uh, you know what are your uh, thoughts about uh, that bit sure so you know as i just uh, talked about uh, so major takeaways i would say and especially the change which are here to stay right so as as market opens up obviously the dining will start the pubs will start the breweries right. will start all that will come back absolutely sure. we are very very positive about it and that happened in the period you just talked about from august to almost january this was all happening during right. the festive seasons right. uh, but then you know the thing is that now uh, what the breweries also have started is looking at deliveries more seriously right okay. uh, so that's an option uh, right. which was never been thought about so that thought is accelerated now right? right that how do i deliver my liquor inside the houses uh, with following all the regulations right? right so a lot of things have been uh, uh, put put to the pedal now right so so that's that's one of the key things like delivery focus for every restaurant that is now there right mm-hmm. now the second important thing is that people are ultra prepared now right mm-hmm. uh, they know that there are chances when a situation like this could come back in the third right. wave or the fourth wave or maybe a new virus right? right due to which their focus on cost has changed right, right. they are very very you know concerned about uh, what they are buying from where they are buying how it's being managed is there is a leakage or not so all the digital ecosystem at the back end of the restaurant is happening right, right. now since that is happening now opening a cloud kitchen from the same kitchen where the dining is being served is much much easier right, right. and all that could happen uh, with the back end integrations of the solutions like urban piper you know a sub solution like ours to somato and swiggy everybody is now integrating uh, the pos systems in the market so even from a support system perspective that has changed right now if i talk about cuisine since deliveries are going to be so big right uh, so all the cuisine which are easier to uh, you know uh serve in a delivery package which which doesn't get uh, soggy at all i have seen a huge surge in volumes right. okay so things like biryani you know you you must have seen that uh, biryani by kilo introduced out handi biryanis now right. almost every biryani uh, chain today is now doing that right, right. that handi based biryani uh, si- similarly uh, if you look at uh, you know sushi culture that has came to picture so japanese uh, cuisine is picking up right uh, just like that you know packaging is also in, evolving uh, to support how can we make sure that uh, you know the indian food reaches in the state it is eaten inside a restaurant so right. that innovation is also coming up i mean like i i ordered something uh, two months back while i was in noida and mm-hmm. uh, uh, i had a beautiful food experience at my home although right. they charged me almost 150 grand 150 rupees for 
you know the packaging as as a packaging cost but uh, the the whatever i ordered the dal the palak paneers and the rotis it came in a super packaging right so that is again a very very important thing uh, which the industry is shifting towards they are focused on good packaging so that food experience could be enriched right so yeah so just to answer the question on the cuisine side so i feel uh, you know uh, uh, the key uh, cuisines which are easy to deliver will always have a larger uh, share in revenue for some time because that's the predominant nature but as things settle and the people innovate the packaging uh, it will again came back come back to you know a good split of indian food versus uh, other foods who are looking to catch up fantastic fantastic uh, kushang uh, you know i want to deep diver i want to dive uh, deeper into into supply chain mm-hmm. right uh, as a product okay uh why don't you take us uh, through uh you know what supply note does uh how is it integrated with uh, restaurants right uh and what kind of an impact does it create for uh, you know these restaurant partners that we have and i think before that if you could give us the statistic right in terms of how many how many restaurants are currently using it you know what all areas are you in uh, in the country right now uh if you could take us through that sure uh, ashu so supply note is basically a cloud based uh, supply chain automation platform Uh, it is uh, aimed at uh, the restaurant businesses for that matter any food business right. and uh, right now we have reached a scale of about 1500 plus outlets across the country uh, okay. and these outlets are spread across 32 cities right so we are agnostic of the format we are agnostic of the city uh, we are available in eight different languages uh, and uh, recently we have got some customer base outside india as well right. so a uh, key markets being ua and southeast asia right uh so uh, these are some markets where we are also focusing uh, now the great thing about uh, supply note as a saas solution is that uh, it's not limited to saas uh, right. it's live action we also provide services of fulfillment right so if you're running a multi outlet setup uh, you know you need not have your own warehouse you need not have a separate team and a fleet managing all your uh, you know inventory uh, we will do it for you right so we kind of create a shared kind of facility Right. Uh, because we have access to the inventory level of multiple outlets uh, we are able to optimize it so instead of storing it for 30 to 45 days we store it for 5 to 7 days so that in the same square feet you can actually manage more brands so that's how we make the unit economic sense right so that saas plus fulfillment services creates a wow for a customer right so our immediate target is anybody who has more than 5 outlets though we are equally good for anybody running a single setup in a single right. outlet setup right uh we recently we have uh, increased our uh, offering and we have also partnered with uh, very good post solutions so we can provide you a full stack you know uh, whether it uh, starting from post and then the supply node which is well integrated on api level we are anyway integrated with 17 plus post systems in the country and on the other side we are integrated with all the different uh, accounting softwares right, right. like so host the tallies of the world right so that basically digitizes your complete operational flow uh, mm-hmm. starting from uh, you know whatever you have sold that gets connected to the pos system using that information and the recipe of the dishes we arrive at what's the inventory at the end of the day right and using that understanding and predicting the sales we are able to arrive at what is exactly you need to buy right, right. and uh, once that is arrived then just on a click of a button all the suppliers get their orders so the supplier right. is also using the same platform which the restaurant is using earlier it was a mess it right. ordering was happening over whatsapp over calls in person meetings and email what not all disconnected right? right so now supply node is one single platform where all this data is accumulated and we are able to make sense out of this data right, right. so now we understand what the restaurant is buying at what frequency it is buying who are the best sellers for them and how they can actually optimize the overall operations right? right and that service is also available for them to use right so that's what we do and at the end of the day we impact the bottom line and scalability of the brand right so our, our customers have experienced you know as high as 8% addition to the bottom line where right. they're making only 12 and a half percent on an average so that right. 12 and a half percent goes to about 20 21% when they are using supply note uh, and solutions like supply note and uh, additionally they are able to standardize everything so that they can open one more outlet right mm-hmm. so that's what we bring we bring scale uh, to the system right so that's think, our value key value product. i think yeah. i think i like some of the points that you highlighted right i think the fact that you're bringing in transparency the fact that you are 
you know preparing them for growth right i mean and the fact that you know that that entire procurement process which is i think one of the most complex pieces in 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 food and and beverage business right and fmb business you know if you get it right at step 1 i think the possibility of uh, you know the uh, the complexity of and the competitiveness of the game i think you're possibly able to manage it better and i think that also clearly sort of helps you uh, you know identify uh, the other emerging areas that you need to concentrate on as a business right and i think really sort of lets you be creative in the process when you are you know in in terms of your say dealing with the customer in terms of you know your offering and so on and so forth right uh kushal you know this is one industry which is traditionally had uh, you know invested it's it's traditionally been invested with with two very difficult problems right one mm-hmm. is mindset where people didn't want to change right and second was uh, that there was massive amount of cash which was uh, you know being dealt with right um and and uh, that always restricted this uh, particular industry uh, to not uh you know come online right uh, and of course uh, you know uh, you know these are these are reasons for uh you know uh, for very obvious uh, i mean these are very obvious reasons right mm-hmm. uh you know do you think once the markets sort of roll back into uh, a normal uh, is this something that we're going to see again or uh, is this something which is uh, the tech adoption that has happened right with say solutions like supply nodes you know and some of the other solutions that restaurants have now started to use is this a perpetual play sure ashu so before i answer that question i just uh, you know i want to talk about habits right mm-hmm. so you know uh, habits uh, you you must have heard that uh, heard of that uh, you know thesis where one says that 21 days is what you change to take uh, change your habit right if you practice it every day so uh, pandemic has been a 24 month phenomenon right, right. and uh, that has changed a consumer's habit to a great extent right, right? and uh, digital payments is a habit which is here to stay right because right. you know you are not i mean like the comfort you know lazy pay right everybody wants to pay later if it's a 200 rupees order right and if you can extend that credit line you just use it right so you are so addicted to the fact right. that you can just get it order on swiggy or now if you go to uh, a place you can just scan and see the qr i mean like scan the qr and just see what's on the menu right, right. i mean like what uh, uh you know uh, this these dot pay guys were able to achieve and all the post systems have also replicated right so uh, all those habits are built now with the consumer right and due to the second when the elongation of the covid right so i feel uh, that payments are not going to roll back the behavior right. so the portion of cash will may, might exist right i will not discount it has been in in in, in the industry since the economy started so right. it's going to be there uh, absolutely uh, but uh, the portion will uh, go very very low and also the brands now realized and they want to you know you know tighten the operations right so mm-hmm. uh, the misuse of cash you know has been a very very trivial issue for a restaurant right so the lesser the cash the better it is right for them uh, in a, pa- a bar or a pub setup it might still be there right uh, because Uh, you know they 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 make a lot of money there and they want to use it they have such expenses and they are running only one outlet they are happy with one outlet right but in larger setups or looking for multi outlet setups the liquidity in form of cash will be always low that's what right. i feel and uh, most of the money will be received digitally either from cards or through wallets and uh, due to which uh, you know things will uh, things are here to stay this particular behavior absolutely i'm i'm very confident on that I think it's a very interesting point that you make. I mean, given that uh, you know earlier payments used to happen in cash, and and that's the reason underreporting used to happen, right? Yeah. But given and now like a lot of because of a large part of payments is essentially happening digitally, so there is no incentive whatsoever, right? I mean, um, I think uh, brands will have to sort of uh, improve their practices anyway, right? And I think that's a, that's an important point that you highlighted, right? Uh, you know, is this a trend that we're going to see across the country kushan given that you're operating across 1500 restaurants right you're operating in a lot of cat a cities and cat b cities and so on so forth right yeah. uh, you know is this a trend that we're going to see across the board or is this something where you're going to see predominantly say in a tier a and you know uh, how is for example bharat playing out right uh, for you i mean what has been your experience in last few uh, you know months right of covid mm-hmm. how is bharat been right uh, how is that yeah. playing out sure so bharat is catching up with india like anything N- like never before right mm-hmm. uh, so th- that's a statement which i would always say i right. mean like uh, solutions like uh, okay credit khata book you know right. 
uh, all these solutions they have seen most of their growth in these in the in bharat right, right. you saw share chat uh, you know becoming a unicorn it was right. a bharat it's a bharat product i mean like right. i don't use share chat right right so what i'm trying to say is that the digital adoption in these areas is there due to mm-hmm. which while i am right now sitting in a cat c city right mm-hmm. it's it's a small town called chapra right mm-hmm. now here uh, i can order from swiggy mm-hmm. i can uh, do a ola bike right very small city the population is uh, le- around 5 to 6 lakh only mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and uh, there also i have these facilities i get a amazon order in 2 days right mm-hmm. not bad <laughs> for a cat cat c cat d city right yeah. so uh, what i'm trying to say is that uh, this behavior is uh, right there in cat b right there in cat c right mm-hmm. uh, to a great extent i cannot comment about cat d it's uh, there is a lot of groundwork still need to be done but wherever there is a uh, there is mobile penetration uh, i see uh, changes reflecting in bharat as well right mm-hmm. uh, and secondly uh, if i talk about my venture specifically so we saw a lot of clients from jharkhand uh, mm-hmm. uh, from cities like rachi uh, jamshedpur uh, we have clients in uh, ludhiana you know jalandhar jammu you know these are not cat cities right, right. Uh, and and we are we are going big ta- i mean like we are doubling down on these cities actually kanpur mm-hmm. lucknow so all the 32 cities i talked about only four are cat a right? right 28 of them are cat b right so we are definitely doubling down on those cities and we are trying to be the leader rather than just becoming the 10th player in a cat a city right mm-hmm. so you know uh, our gtm is uh, like that right and every cat a brand is also looking to have its brand so if i talk about one of my customers biryani by kilo right they have a they have a uh, center in patna mm-hmm. uh, they have opened up they have not opened up a outlet in uh, bangalore but they have opened a outlet in patna and gorakhpur before that right so that tells you you know that right. uh, how how the startups are also, also are looking at the markets right so right. uh, definitely i mean like uh, everybody is thinking very very strategic uh, they are studying the market then only they are deciding it doesn't matter if it's cat a or cat b for only specific products people are still very very bullish on cat a first and then cat b i mean right. it depends on product and the approaches but uh, for us uh, it's it's a balance and we are seeing equal adoption wow right i think i think uh, also the fact that you know across 2020 2021 20, people essentially been looking at just about three or four things right Yeah. So the kind of influence is now very predictable, right? Uh, with all all digital digital consumption, right? I think the, the influence is predictable, and and I think I kind of agree with your point that you know the difference between say a tier A and a tier two, especially, and I think to a certain extent even tier, uh, I would say, uh, parts of tier three, I think is is shrinking very very fast, right? So I think uh, you know earlier the distance that used to be say, you know a good uh, say thirty thirty five forty percent, right, is now actually shrunk to just about a difference of six seven eight percent, right? Uh, and and i think i think you're right right so earlier uh, you know mcdonalds will take forever to open up in a tier 2 city right say a kanpur or lucknow or bhopal or indore but uh, in the current uh, you know ecosystem a lot of brands are now opening up cloud kitchens which is a very lighter sort of version and and engage the customer and then sort of uh, you know use uh, the distribution systems like us so zomato and swiggy and now a dot pay right uh, yeah. like formats right to to distribute so i think i think that kind of uh, that is that is a very valid point that you highlighted in the process right and i think yeah. the transition is going to open up india from a very different consumption standpoint right and i think uh, food being an experiential uh, category and experimental category uh, i think is is possibly going to be one of the biggest beneficiaries of that as we go along right uh, so uh, you know kushan i'm going to i'm going to move our conversation a little towards uh, supply not right uh, you know i mean you built this business from scratch right uh, this is essentially a brand which has come out of india uh, this is a brand which has come out of uh, you know you experiencing the restaurant industry and you know the gaps in the restaurant industry and so on so forth right uh, what are some of the building blocks of supply not right uh, you know what is uh, what do you think are the most important uh, elements uh, that supply nose is built on and is going to uh, you know help uh, it to go on to achieve uh, a much larger uh, status in the, the food and beverage industry sure so uh, i think supply nose is built on uh, creating value i mm-hmm. mean like we are not on a acquisition run right we are not looking to have 15000 restaurant in the next 3 months no right. right we are here to create a value for one outlet that's our goal right i mean like uh, we are not rushing things here, right? right so we want to build it right and we are here to stay right? right that's 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 something which goes in every team meeting at supply note right so uh, we make money from day one 
because we make money for the customers from there right. so that that's that's super super important for us right so we take our time our acquisition and the setup and the training takes about you know 15 to 45 days depending on what size of business we are onboarding right and once that is done you know uh, our goal is to make sure that the customer is using each and every module we are not like a typical post system or a, any any saas which just sells and goes away right? right like we have a success team which works right. with the client right uh, day in day out so that uh, because we understand that there is huge attrition attrition happening at restaurants so there could be change right. of staff right now the chain staff don't know what how to use this system because it's still not that very popular like a right. like a tally or something right so uh, we work with them very very closely right and uh, make sure that they're using the modules they are understanding they're getting the reports right how it's impacting and then you know we are working very very uh, closely on the technology as well right so yeah. we have a very good uh, feedback loop with the customers right uh, so after onboarding every a uh, month we have a customer call where we understand where he is feeling troubles uh, we roll out uh, you know updates in the product on a quarterly basis mm-hmm. uh, because that change is something which everybody experiences right. uh, and we keep upgrading it right mm-hmm. now the again one one more important thing is that there are a lot of startups out there who are saying ai you know <laughs> using the term ai but uh, uh, very few people understand uh, what what part of ai they are doing right so here we are working on predictions algorithms uh, which leads to uh, you know optimum purchases right optimal inventory management so we have built our algorithm which is consuming data you know uh, uh, just to let you know we are the second largest player after zomato uh, when it comes to uh, procurement you know uh, for a restaurant so zomato's hyper pure is the leader right now and we are the second largest player there so all this data goes inside our algorithm and trains it to predict better right mm-hmm. uh, and uh, our technology and product is uh, the second most important thing which we focus on uh, on, on supply not uh, at supply not right so uh, that's the second thing and third thing is obviously growth 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 right so we we do everything which can uh, increase the pipeline uh, uh, you know make shorten the acquisition cycles uh, lowers the attrition which is which has an excess so we have a 94% retention at supply node i mean like nobody leaves it because we right. sell annually right so uh, that's the third thing right i mean growth is the third thing i mean like, you can understand what's our dna here right, right. so uh, yeah so we are we are keep building we are building and uh, we are a revenue first business right so these these are like three basic blocks i would say which has uh, which is on which the supply node brand is built fantastic uh uh Kushang, what are some of the key metrics uh, that you track at the business? Uh, what are some of your uh, immediate priorities, uh, and what are some of the milestones that you're chasing at Supply Node? Uh, supply Node. Uh, in say the next, uh, I think six months is going to be too short, given that we're still emerging out of a COVID environment. But say next one year, right? Uh, so around the same time when I possibly talk to you uh, again, you know, what are what are some of those, uh, you know, some of those uh, milestones that you uh, would have achieved by then? sure uh, so uh, so we have uh, north stars and then the metrics which affect the north star so uh, there are two north star right now for us uh, one is the number of brands uh, or the number of outlets which are using our software right, right. and the second is uh, the gmv uh, the total purchase volume b- which is being managed by supply right so those are the two key metrics uh, which uh, we are building right and th- that that is a lot of sub metrics uh, right uh, now i'll talk about uh, uh, i mean like where we are i told you we are at about 1500 outlets today right uh, unique locations right uh, cities don't matter to us because uh, licenses don't look at the city and then start uh, it is just uh, you know it's just there so we are right. looking to uh, reach a 5x on where we stand in this right. particular year so we would be looking at about 7500 outlets uh, to 8000 outlets by the end of this uh, year Right. right. Uh, and uh, on the GMV front, right now we did in the pandemic year we did about ten uh, million dollars in total mm-hmm. GMV through the platform, right. and and we are looking at uh, about twenty five to thirty million dollars in this particular year. Right. So uh, that's those are the key milestones in the next twelve months which we are looking to hit. Right. Very and uh, yeah, and and down the, down the line, hundred uh, million is our two year goal. Right. Hundred million in GMV. 
is is what we are looking at uh, in next two years right fantastic uh prashant one thing that has happened across all startups right uh, i think uh, is essentially uh, you know when most of these startups uh, are raising capital you know they get into a a, a zone where uh, you know they tend to uh, you know it's a it's, it's so you basically trying to achieve uh, you know very uh, unrealistic targets right uh, but i think that's how you motivate yourself right that's how you sort of that's the whole aggression of being in the startup ecosystem right that's the fun of being in the startup right uh, and a lot of that led into you know a huge burn um, uh, you know uh, thought process right uh, right and i think i think also the fact that you know given that you had to go out and raise the next round i think uh, you know essentially the deficit became uh, a mechanics to justify uh, your next round of uh, fundraise right uh, how has that changed right uh, for supply chain uh, supply node i mean i hear you i hear that you know you are very roi centric today and which is uh, very heartening to sort of uh, hear right uh, but what are some of those uh, changes that have happened uh, you know through the covid situation right which you think are going to continue to be part of the uh, you know the supply node story forever mm-hmm. sure understood so uh, basically you know uh, i have learned i would say i have learned i was also a believer that burning is building Right. Uh, but i don't believe in burning burning is building right, right. Uh, what i have understood is if burning is leading to uh, you know value 1 2 3 uh, which is basically shifting you from point 1 to point 2 and mm-hmm. then from that you can look at point 3 then that's cool i mean like if you have a plan to reach to point 2 and mm-hmm. for that you need some capital that's absolutely fine right, right. so uh, that is something which has uh, came to uh, our like goal clarity right so we set up our goals right we 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 are also loss making right now at the current point of time but we have a clear goal in our head and we try to reach as close to uh, that goal as possible right, right. Uh, and, and instead of that you know earlier you know it was more like how do you i mean like the north star is also not clearly defined for a lot of ventures right mm-hmm. which is a major major tussle so i mean like right. you don't know which is which is the drive which is the business driver which metric is the business driver if you don't know that then how do you arrive at a goal right. and if you are not arriving at a goal you don't know what's your next point right so uh, that clarity uh, is something uh, which has uh, came to supply no pandemic mm-hmm. has helped us a lot in uh, defining uh, a clearer clearer gtm right mm-hmm. for uh, the next period Uh, mm-hmm. we have been super cautious in spending we have started a new division of marketing being in a b2b business you know uh, it was generally feet on street you know and relationship basis conversions you know so people had to make connects work on it then you get a connect uh, then you get a conversion but uh, now we have uh, built a mechanism where uh, you know we are able to make digital connects work on them give them yeah. demos give them free trials convert we have been able to build a credit program just like aws right mm-hmm. so uh, we have made partners even in pakistan right uh, in dubai in australia who are now becoming a resellers right so right. we have made a reseller program right so all these uh, gtm uh, and channels uh, is is what is being added uh, to the supply note story during the pandemic right so so this this pandemic has made us resilient as a brand and more focused towards the goal uh, mm-hmm. uh we are not thinking about how much we are burning as long as we are clear about uh, what we are looking to achieve here right mm-hmm. so goal is more important uh, burning is not that important we might burn we might not burn that's absolutely fine right mm-hmm. so as i told you i mean like we are focused to achieve the north stars right now uh, the two north stars which is about hitting a 25 million dollar in gmv and achieving 7500 outlets right so for that whatever is needed we'll do that because we know what to do after that right i think i think there is definitely a, you know a, a deeper clarity right is what i sense right uh in terms of what you want to achieve and i think i think also the fact that possibly the way you go burning things uh you know burning uh you know through your operations i don't think a lot of that possibly is happening now i mean while you could still be burning right i mean which is not uh you know which, which could really depend on the nature of the business right and i think given that you're trying to uh you know help an industry transition right i mean there are certain uh you know deficits that are bound to emerge in the process but uh, but i think i i hear you right i think a bunch of things that you highlighted like the uh, say 
a reseller program and you know uh, with a credit system like an AWS uh, where you incentivize people to sort of adopt it and so on and so forth, right? I think these are some interesting points that you've highlighted and, and I'm sure, uh, you know, profitability is something that uh, you should be looking at as, as you go along. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kushan, one another question that I have, right, uh, is uh, I've happened to know you much, much uh, closely, right, uh, from very early days when you started this, right? Uh, you know, uh, and, and I know for a fact that, you know, your founding team hasn't really changed, right? Uh, there is no alteration which has happened. I think you've been able to sort of consistently bring in people from outside and, you know, make them part of your uh, vision and, uh, you know, what, what, what the company was always, what the company stood for, you know, and, and you know, you could just sort of make them the part of the process, right? Uh, and there was a certain sense of ownership that you could create, right? I think which is very important at, uh, at, at any any early stage brand, right? Unless you have champions, right? Unless those champions can carry the brand on their shoulder across, say, uh, you know, your customer acquisition process or within operations or, uh, you know, each aspect of the business, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's a very challenging environment to build a business, right? Uh, what has been your, uh, for example, say, mantras or hacks, right? To creating a supercharged team, um, and 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 you know how have you been able to instill that sense of purpose uh, in the team that you created? So, uh, I think it's a very very relevant point. I think which you have brought brought to the conversation. So I mean, like team is everything. I mean, like uh, it's it's more than I mean, like you have a vision, right? But okay. you don't know how to achieve that if Sorry. you don't have a you, if you don't have the right legs and hands to achieve, right? So. Uh, in my case, I've been blessed with my co-founders. Uh, we knew each other for uh, from dorm days. We have, right. we have known each other for almost nine, nine ten years now. Right? I, I mean, that makes me feel old. Right? So uh, I mean, like, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, like, it has been a crazy story. Uh, one right. common thing which uh, always uh, helped us wherever right. uh, we had our doubts uh, was the goal clarity, the vision, you know, and. Uh, uh, the second important thing is the sense of ownership, right? So our culture is ownership. You know, let me just simplify it for you. So you know, every 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 time when a new joinee comes in, right, mm-hmm. uh, there is a session which we do, right? So there is a session with the CEO, right, uh, which is like a session with me, right? In that session, I only give uh, two mantras, right, uh, which is that this is your company, right? This is your role. This is my role. Right? Mm-hmm. I don't own it. You own it equally. Right. That's the first thing. Whether it's an intern, whether it's a long-term guy, a very key managerial person we had, mm-hmm. the mantra is the same that you own a piece of it, right? And you are free to do whatever you want to. Right. right. If you need help, we are just a call away. Right. Mm-hmm. That's that's the one important thing which we always transpire. And the second thing is obviously orientation with a vision. Right, mm-hmm. you might take awkward steps, right, which could be in the wrong direction. But if mm-hmm. you are looking to realign yourself, talk to your team member and align yourself with the vision. That's it. If you are able to do so, then you feel a sense of freedom. One, which makes you always energetic, right. And the second thing is that you ultimately know what you are here to achieve, right. If you are in alignment, the goal will be achieved, right. So that makes you learn and be energetic at the same time. Right. Mm-hmm. So passing on the ownership in the right way is very, 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 very important. Right. Uh, I mean, like even in co-founder, when we, we had those meetings early on, I said that I don't know how to develop, you know, although I come from IIT Kanpur and I have that technology background. But then, you know, when I was speaking to Harshit, he was one year junior to me, not my batch, but three of us, same batch. I said that this is your area. I will never kind of, you know, intervene. We always give that freedom. That's that's how the co-founder conversations happen. Right. Right. We learned along the way also that there had been some overlaps, the product and the technology and the operations and all that, right? But then we understood that how important it is to give space to each other, uh, to have that ownership, to allow the other person to express that ownership, right? Mm-hmm. And that we always uh, talk uh, talk down to our team members, right? We prefer to have a flat structure, but wherever necessary, we go in a hierarchy structure as well, right? But there also we pass on that this is your area. Whatever you do, it's okay. Whether you do a mistake, it's also okay, but it should be aligned with the goal. That's it. I mean, like the, 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 this keeps us super charged, super motivated day in, day out, you know? Uh, my role is clear to me uh, and uh, uh, everybody has their role clear in their head. And whenever they are confused, they talk to us. Uh, they feel free to talk to us. So we are super reachable if, if you can add that as a third element, right? 
so reachability is also equally important even if you are following a hierarchical structure in a startup right so we are right now a 50 member team but everybody can reach me anytime right uh, so yeah so that's the flexibility we give uh, which keeps everybody in loop aligned and uh, everybody is learning right whenever they know yeah great uh, you know one thing i want to particularly pick right empowerment comes with its own set of risks i think you've tried to sort of address it in the process right uh, but how do you incentivize risk how do you how do you how do you sort of ensure that uh, people feel uh, uh, you know that uh, taking a you know taking a certain risk is not necessarily bad right uh, usually people don't right uh, mm-hmm. especially when you have uh, you know when you have when you hire right when you bring in people uh, you know who are employees in an organization right uh, the whole fact that you know the 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 i mean there's a play safe nature that comes into uh, the game automatically right uh, you because you know you're trying to defend your position and and so on and so forth right those are those are those are the kind of complexities that that automatically come in right with that position how do you incentivize risk i mean how do you ensure that you know everybody and like you said right uh, you believe in empowerment right but with empowerment how do you ensure that risk is incentivized adequately absolutely so uh... I mean, like, uh, I mean, like, I mean, like, I get this question better than I think anybody in the world because once uh, with that empowerment costed me the company, right? Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, there was a deal uh, with one of the largest uh, organizations in India, uh, right. which runs major brands. Okay. Uh, you know, like uh, KFC, Costa, you know, these kind of brands, right. uh, so that kind of scale. Right. So, uh, you know, we we. Got into that venture, and we were uh, our our scale uh, became ten ten times of what we were doing at that time, right? And uh, uh, we were the main supplier for the commissary as a brand, right? Right. And uh, uh, there was a project, so yeah. uh, so we we had a project which was uh, you know increasing our revenue by seven to eight times what what we did last time. That single mm-hmm. project, you know, it was a three months job. we had to source something from the ground right, right. and bring it to uh, uh, the location and we were we will we'll be paid right like big time right so on the advice and the freedom of uh, the person who was responsible for that account uh, we took that bid right and uh, you will not believe that we got into a mess we got into a super mess we had to airlift stuff the quality of the product got rejected the vendor was going to supply that flu uh and, and it was a huge mess I, i we have to get involved uh and 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 somehow we kind of did it but that whole project cost us costed us almost the whole cash flow whatever right. we had right cash flow was hit we didn't had money for 45 days somehow we survived uh and the money came back finally from uh, the con- contract and uh, we were able to see uh, the next phase of the journey but that was that was a real example that uh, how empowering someone can go wrong right, right. Uh, so i'm mean, like uh, see uh, here you know uh, that was a that was the biggest mistake but that was the biggest tutor right? right that led to that led to supply note that accelerated right. the whole process right, right. Uh, so what we have today uh, is because of that mistake because that right. made us uncomfortable we were very comfortable uh, in a inventory led model Right? right and we were not realizing the cash flow risk right, right. Uh, when that happened uh, the sense of scale when it came to the business right uh, we understood the risk tagged along with it right mm-hmm. and then we looked at how do we reduce this risk and keep scaling still right and that's how supply note came into picture we started an experiment with a with a food brand in noida that right. worked that was a multi location outlet sure. we launched a separate brand and it all scaled right and again it was one of our employees who took charge even in making this saas right it was no co-founder you know right. uh, one of our team members uh, with our help and our experience who mm-hmm. came up with supply note so again uh, uh, so one mistake and uh, the birth of supply note which mm-hmm. was the next i mean like th- which is going to drive the whole thing now right, right. so uh, so that that is that was a super learning uh, and uh, it taught us that uh, if you know if you're not taking risk you cannot right. cover up for the reward which is going to come up right, right. so uh, even after that we keep empowering people right uh, definitely we have a caution right mm-hmm. we understand that uh, you know what it could lead to right. uh, but 
uh, we we allow it to happen right we we always allow it to happen the bigger the risk uh, we get involved immediately that's something which we do now right if right. if something like that happens but right. uh, we always allowed it interesting so it's a, it's a very calibrated uh, approach that you have towards doing risk right and and, and how are incentivizing uh, you know such uh, champions we we are uh, a huge fan of esops right, right. and uh, uh, that is something uh, i mean like someone has to prove that to us that they deserve it right so it doesn't mean that if you are coming from a iim background or a harvard background and right. uh, taking a managerial role you'll have a esop you know doesn't work like that right? right so somebody who has been working with us and uh, has contributed to a key segment and right. taken some risk which has led to a reward uh, is always uh, in the reviews we give that uh, person an option to uh, you know uh, be- take some equity in the company right uh, so that is one of the ways which has been very very fruitful for us and actually it helps a company grow a startup grow especially uh, because you get that person you know that that person is e- equally capable of taking risk he has that entrepreneurial zeal in himself so he sticks and uh, he feels rewarded right he, he the sense of ownership goes high so that's one of the ways uh, secondly we do a lot of bonuses as well right mm-hmm. so uh, uh, since we are in a process where uh, sales close closes so everybody has a sense of understanding what's their roi in the business right mm-hmm. so basis that if somebody overachieve we have an incentive structure in place uh so we we do give incentives and bonuses right Fantastic. uh yeah so yeah so those are the two ways through which uh, we kind of uh, pass on the gratitude uh, to our champions lovely uh kushan i'm going to go back to a little bit of bharat again right uh, and i mean that's my uh i very probably believe that i think the kind of growth that india has must be uh now that uh you know bharat is uh, coming around very strong right uh, they have the exposure to technology uh, there is uh, liquidity which is available in the market a lot of micro opportunities are coming in right uh, what are some of the key markets that uh, you are targeting uh, for bharat and uh, how are you uh, designing for the complexity uh, right that is going to emerge from that and and you know and when i say that right i essentially mean that for example you know while bihar uh, could have uh, you know might be bhojpuri as a language right and hindi as as another language right uh, there are certain consumption preferences that are there right uh, and especially when you have to set up a, a team right just you know acquire clients and customers right unlike a tier a environment where you can acquire a lot of uh, restaurant owners in a digital medium yes. uh, here you'll have to have a feet on street right as soon as you start talking about up it's a very different market as soon as you start to look at um say uh, you know an mpn chatagar central india right it's very different maharashtra is very different down south it's very very different right so as soon as you start talking of as soon as we go a layer below the complexity starts to increase right uh, uh, right um while the consumer has become very savvy the business owner is still not as as savvy right so give me a sense of uh, what are some of the new emerging markets that are there and uh, you know how are you preparing for the regional complexities that emerge from uh, those markets sir sure, uh so i think emerging markets i would say uh, you know uh, down south it has been a blessing uh, for a lot of b2b ventures because right. uh, you know if you talk about karnataka you know uh, towns like mysore and you know uh, uh, manipal and these these uh, locations they have a lot of restaurants now right. they have understanding of what a pause is how zomato helps how swiggy helps Uh, again in uh, tamil nadu it's like a you know hub for saas startups so mm-hmm. uh, b2b saas is very very big in tamil nadu uh, right. like engineering and all that happens due to which the population the, is such that they have understanding of technology and uh, they are very very savvy towards it if right. you talk about uh, penetration in the western market again gujarat maharashtra these states are uh, they are good the rural part is still not there obviously there is a gap uh, but uh, if you look at gujarat right especially you know there are so many towns which are tier 2 and tier 3 but so developed right i mean like gujarat is one of the states where i have landed in six different airports you know that's only one of the states where i where i've done that right even in a large state like uttar pradesh there is one or two airport right i mean like now they have developed some of them now one is there in kanpur as well but what i'm trying to say here is that uh, the western part of india is also uh, seeing a good growth uh, compared to uh, the other parts uh, so uh, first priority is south second is west 
uh then the north part and the central part is there it's catching up uh the east is still seeing uh, a slow adoption right uh reasons could be that uh, not many startups work in that region and due to the preference preferences you know uh, it is coming as another you know, fourth or the fifth right right so that's one of the key reasons calcutta has not been able to develop as a startup hub as compared to a delhi ncr or a delhi or a mumbai right mm-hmm. so that's one of the reasons which i see uh why it's lacking and the, uh, due to you know north northeast still you know uh, is not looked beyond a tourist destination right mm-hmm. i mean like uh, that's again a concern you know a, a huge opportunity huge population but still there are there is still uh, a lot to be done the infrastructure is also not there uh, the penetration of mobile the internet connectivity is still struggling right mm-hmm. so uh, uh, you know uh, on an infra level that's how i'll i'll classify the adoption and and that's it's in correlation with how uh, the bharat apps have performed in this region you know apps like share chat okay credit and based on this data sure. now the second point you know uh, uh, other than the emerging markets how will uh, companies like us or uh, upcoming companies focus on bharat right mm-hmm. so see i mean like for us uh, complexions are at different levels right so right. first is obviously the gtm that's priority mm-hmm. number 1 right. so the second is adoption so mm-hmm. wh- when it comes to gtm you need to have local partners right mm-hmm. uh, if you don't have local partners a geogra- no geographical understanding it will be very very difficult while i say that one should look at bharat but if you have not uh, established yourself as a key player in tier 1 city or any other good city then uh, you know uh, the perception gap comes in right so you need to establish yourself a little before going to a bharat and trying to and then trying to establish it's easier for you right right in the gtm approach and you will need the local support so you need to have some reselling partners uh, who have done it you know uh, uh, well has the network understands the market right so uh, uh, part making partners in uh, in in these cities is very very important the second problem which will come is is adoption right mm-hmm. after gtm now adoption will have challenges like ui ux problem you know uh, what mobile they are using what internet speed they are getting right the language constraint right while language is not now the biggest constraint because uh, it's uh, i mean like a lot of startups have cracked it multilingual is not a problem right so mm-hmm. uh, as i told you we are also in six seven languages right so uh, language is sorted uh, having a resource who can speak that language solves the training part also mm-hmm. right uh, but then uh, the ui ux and the internet connectivity is the biggest problem you mm-hmm. know uh because sometimes you know even in tier 1 cities it happens so somebody has a kitchen uh, who is operating in a basement right mm-hmm. uh there the 5g doesn't work right so it becomes a 2g and right. uh, suddenly they will call you and say ki sir software nahi chal raha mm-hmm. this software nahi chal raha internet nahi chal raha those mm-hmm. are two different things right so so our support team has to do that as well just right. do a screen share go to the location see what's happening and then they realize that internet is poor right so they have to say that so you have to do something to improve the internet right and uh, then it will work because we are a cloud based solution so those are the challenges uh, finding the right partner making sure the partner under and um, the user understands what the problems are find helping the u- users solving that problem is is important and you have to crack the ui ux absolutely i mean like ui and ux is the most important part in this right if the product is complex and since you are not there uh, present yourself as a support team right uh, it will be a disaster right i mean people will buy and then they will be on your head to refund right? right so that kind of thing can happen right so yeah i mean like those are my two cents on uh, how we can penetrate tier 2 kushan how is the product road map uh, looking like uh, what are the next two years like on the on the product front what are some of the other streams of uh, uh, offerings that uh, you know we see getting added to line one sure so uh, right now we are uh, uh, we are doing a, a very interesting angle so we are trying to build uh, a lazy pay for restaurants so mm-hmm. while they are purchasing from their suppliers uh, mm-hmm. from their uh, existing suppliers they will mm-hmm. have a pay later option right mm-hmm. and uh, to access that uh, they will not need to go through all the chaos you know of submitting all the proofs where they are who they are what's their account statement what's their civil score Right. it will just be based on supply notes data right we'll have the basic kyc is done uh, anyway and it you can avail that loan in in less than an hour right mm-hmm. so so we are going to disrupt the b2b lending process uh, 
uh, we're looking to become a uh, you know a, a criteria through, through, uh, so that people can enjoy that so that's mm-hmm. something we are building we are very excited about it and uh, uh, the underwriting mechanism if we can standardize is something again on our cards right mm-hmm. so that's one uh, we are absolutely working uh, on the ai engine which is gonna uh, give a asset to smaller restaurants that they need not have procurement ma- managers because mm-hmm. you know they're already uh, struggling with uh, keeping up their expenses they need not have a dedicated resource to procure right so single outlet anyway doesn't has it uh, but it will just uh, make sure that procurement is done in a standard for even a single location without having experienced procurement manager right mm-hmm. so they're making that uh, procurement bot right so uh, in the next uh, 18 to 24 months that will be on the road mm-hmm. and a lot of restaurants would be using it right uh, we are also trying to build an hr component to the product so as of now uh, we don't allow salary management those kind of things uh, mm-hmm. we allow most of the procurement related accounting and other stuff uh, but uh, hr side is also we are including so that people could manage shifts you know uh, this learning has came from uh, markets outside india but we see that uh, is equally important in india right so uh, we are building up that particular angle also in the product so it becomes a very exhaustive product uh, but uh, it's something which will be uh, giving a huge roi to the brand fantastic you know i'm going to i'm going to dig you a little deeper uh, you know before we end this session right on uh, the fintech play that you mentioned right i mean is this something yeah. that you're doing on the books of uh, supply not is this a partnership that you're building in the process uh tell us a little more about it we're building a marketplace for banks and nbfcs so any bank can come in uh, they can use our uh, understanding of the customer uh, mm-hmm. with the customer's uh, acknowledgement uh, mm-hmm. and uh, basis that information uh, they can choose to give loans and mm-hmm. even uh, with the flexibility of choosing the sku so suppose mm-hmm. a coffee chain is doing a sandwich a burger and coffee so they can choose to finance the coffee transaction only because they're confident on that transaction and they right. can charge a different rate right? right as compared to a coffee chain buying a bread right mm-hmm. so they could that could be at a different rate right so that mm-hmm. kind of flexibility and empowerment is what we are looking to give to banks and at the same time to the restaurants so that they don't struggle for working capital but uh, kushang a lot of that happens on consumption data right you are a procurement software right Uh, mm-hmm. a lot of that is locked into the post right so have you been able to i mean uh, you know the, the crack the post play right because you know posts essentially are also extending similar services right so are you sort of entering their territory so we have we are in process to actually come up uh, uh, with our own post post which okay. will be in form of an acquisition right mm-hmm. uh, so that's something which we are doing uh, so so that we can just extend our line of services and somebody mm-hmm. who is looking to uh, get a full stack and get it right so that's one secondly uh, if any customer is happy with their current pos we are already integrated with most of the pos systems out there mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so any way that uh, sales input enters supply node mm-hmm. environment right so we understand what kind of sales is happening what products are being consumed and that's directly uh, linked with the ingredients right mm-hmm. so since you understand the ingredient that is the key information uh which leads you uh to what is the actual sales right so that information we already have right mm-hmm. so uh, we are uh, you know basing that case right and and see one important criteria and uh, very very important factor is the intent of a payment by the restaurant right mm-hmm. so restaurant in this case pays from the supply node platform to their seller right mm-hmm. so we know what they promised when we know when they are paying right so that information is something which uh, nobody has because mm-hmm. it never existed right so we are uh, one of the first platform which is with the sellers and the restaurants both parties are there so we are a two way saas we are not a singular saas so most of the post systems only sell to the restaurant they have no understanding of what uh, you know the sellers uh, who the sellers are and how how the data exchange will happen there right so that's an advantage over any other post system so i think i think we'll keep that the fintech discussion for a different time i think it's a it's a discussion which requires uh, you know an hour long conversation maybe a couple of hours right so i think as you launch we'll possibly get into a discussion on that i mean that's an area which is very close to my heart I and mean, that's something that i 
uh, you know, enjoy talking the most about, uh, right? And I think, uh, and that really comes from the fact that, you know, if you can really empower businesses to, uh, and, you know, if you can sort of fast track the cash flows, the results would be absolutely phenomenal, right? Yeah. Uh, and I, I think we'll, we'll keep that discussion for the next time, uh, Kujang. Uh, um, you know, I am going to move towards the last section of uh, our conversation today. Uh, Kujang, you did something which was, you know, you didn't necessarily come with a background in food, right? Uh, you weren't uh, necessarily uh, very passionate about food, right? I mean, it was, it, it happened as, as uh, from an interest uh, led into an opportunity, you built an opportunity and then all of that, that helped you, you know, understand the nuances of food and, and then supply note happened, right? Uh, you know, you've essentially disrupted a lot of traditional ways uh, where, uh, you know, businesses consumed uh, within the within the FNP space, right? Uh, you've tackled a lot of uh, preconceived, uh, you know, uh, consumption patterns that people had, right? Or notions people had around utilization of technology. And, and you know, you've really challenged the normal in that sense, right? Uh, what are some of your uh, inputs for, uh, you know, early stage founders who are building uh, for, uh, you know, which are, which are essentially disrupting the traditional consumption ecosystem. What are some of your thoughts? So I didn't knew I have done so many things, Fashion. I just thought I'm building a startup there. Anyway, <laughs> so if you say so. So uh, so basically, you know, as you rightly said, I mean, like, uh, I would say I was a foodie. That's for sure. I mean, like, uh, 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 I, I knew, uh, you know, I wanted to go to restaurants, eat all the fancy stuff coming from a, humble background and all that but then uh, uh, but then you know what happened in my case uh, and in our in our case was that you know we were always open to opportunities right mm-hmm. so uh, we were not married to the idea that this is what i'm going to do right mm-hmm. uh, we took things on the face value right mm-hmm. what has opportunity what doesn't has opportunity right, right. Uh, how big the market is, right? So initially, I didn't know how to do that, right? I mean, like uh, we, we we were building uh, offline advertising affiliate ad, ad network. If you remember the right. first pitch, right? Yes. So so that 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 changed into a supply chain automation startup, right? right? It's the same company. Uh, down here, six uh, six years later, and uh, right. fifty plus investors on board. So uh, that that kind of thing happened, right? So it happened because we were open, you know, we were listening to the customers. Mm-hmm. We were uh, uh, we were trying to solve the problem which the customer was saying and right. tossing it in front of us. So we went to the proposition that I'll reduce your cost of packaging, okay? Mm-hmm. And I will place an ad. So that verified that there was a gap uh, in terms of margins, right? That led to our next aim, right? That okay, this guy is struggling with margins. What can we do next? Right. So we got rid of the inefficiency of advertising, and we thought, right. Ki, forget about the advertising. Let's help them in, you know, making more margins. And that's how we entered the next area of growth. Let add more categories and help them reduce that margin. Once we understood that, okay, this is how our margins is going to be reduced, and we understood that there are problems there, like uh, cash flow is going to hit you very hard. Right. How do you make sure that you are getting your money back? Right? right. We faced a lot of defaults from restaurants. I mean, like our employees got uh, beaten up for asking money. Can you believe that? So <laughs> these kind of things happened, right? So we were right. we were all put into troublesome situation and we learned from it. So mm-hmm. openness to learn, listening to customers, led right. us to realize that there is an opportunity uh, like supply note, which exists, right? And then market validation when we right, came up with the right PMF, right? So I mean, like this is what makes uh, a company go from, you know, I mean, like it happens only once in a while that somebody hits the right idea in one go, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I am very close to ShareChat founders, you know? Mm-hmm. So uh, I mean, like we did projects together when we were starting up in college. Uh, so I mean, like uh, even in their story, they did 21 other experiments before arriving at ShareChat. Right. Uh, in our story, we evolved. We did right. pivots in our journey, right? Uh, to arrive at what we do. So that is the most important thing. Listen to your right. customer, your users, if you're building a B2C application and uh, continue building and solving that particular problem. That's going to lead you to, you know, what you want to achieve, right? So that will be my two cents to any budding entrepreneur. 
you start with a problem understand the market size approach uh, from a customer side or not not from what you think always mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so yeah that is great kushan last question how important is it to manage finances right uh, while balancing uh, you know the growth trajectory uh, what's your what's your input on that that's the most important thing which any businessman needs to do right i mean like <laughs> that's that's the Uh, that's the life cliche, and death of it's a, it's a cliched question <laughs> in a way i would say i mean like it's it's like uh, it's how a business is called its life or it's growing you know right. uh, the amount of money you have uh, the cash flow you can move right? right and if you are able to make money out of it it's great right but the cash flows you need to make sure that's there right so finances is super super important right. uh, you have to keep a check on uh the burn rates you need to keep a you have to respond to market situations like covid like demonetization we survived all that i don't believe how we did but we did right mm-hmm. so uh, uh, uh it it was it was it was due to the financial discipline which a lot of early investors brought in uh because we were youngsters right and we were reckless i will be very honest here we didn't knew how to spend early on we always thought that we have to spend to achieve to that level you know earlier mm-hmm. our philosophy or also that burning is building but then that 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 became goal oriented right so right. finances uh, needs to be checked in you need to understand uh, what your revenues are what your burn rates are you have to keep them under control you have to understand when your investment is going to come next what metrics you need to hit uh, to reach to the next uh, uh, cash flow event right mm-hmm. so uh, and and did that will always enable you in attaining market leadership uh going for acquisitions which are super important for your growth right. so you you have to be super super diligent on these angles super kushan like always it's always a pleasure to talk to you thank you so much for taking the time out uh you know always honest Same always uh, straight uh and uh, you know always uh, trying to see clarity right uh, you know and thank you so much for uh, uh taking the time out it was a pleasure to have you with us uh you know i am sure supply node is going to go on to uh, become a very uh, important uh, you know component of uh, the fnb industry i think uh, you know you 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 built for it you designed for it uh, i think the numbers speak of it and i think i think 2020 is essentially uh, while of course it's had a lot of negatives uh, and now 2021 uh, i think this is going to bring in a very different phase of digital option in the country right uh, and i think i think you're there uh while that transition is happening uh as in as a, as a, as a uh you know dependable player right thank you so much it was a pleasure to have you with us uh hopefully we'll have you uh, next time around uh, very soon uh, while uh, you know you do your next round of fundraise and uh, you know your next launches on the fintech front i think it'll be a pleasure to uh, have you with us then thank you so much ashu it was great speaking with you catching up after catching up after so long and uh, look forward to connect uh, i mean like as soon as possible <laughs> bye take care take care bye take care